Hello and welcome back to Investments. We are doing Investopedia videos. Uh, first two are about uh, making your own trades, but the f this one I want to talk about creating your own game. If you click on the Games tab near the top, uh, it will bring you to My Games list, which are the games that you're a part of. And then there's the My Games, you can join games, which is a list of all the games that are available. And there are a bunch of them out there with all sorts of different options. Creating game is what we want to talk about today. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Create Game. It'll bring you to the Create Game tab, where we're going to, first step we're going to take is entering our name. So we're going to call this one Investo Investment Game No End. It'll tell you if you have any, any invalid characters in there. And we're going to make it a public game so everybody can join. We're going to limit it to $25,000 because we're kind of beginners here. So we're going to start with a smaller amount, just which is a little bit more realistic for for me and for others that are maybe joining as, a, as new, new investors. So allow trading at margin. That means do we allow people to borrow? Yeah, we're going to allow people to borrow on their portfolio. Yep. We're going to allow people to short sell. And we're going to allow people to trade options. We're going to say yes on that just so we can allow people lots of flexibility here. Okay, then we set the start date of our game and the end date. We're not going to set an end date. We're going to say no end. And that way we can just keep it going for a long time. Allow late entry? Yes, we're going to let people enter late since we don't have an end. If you want to have a limited game, you can say nobody can join after a certain date. But and then these next two are, I think are really important to me. Um, allow history viewing and allow portfolio viewing. That means if you say yes on both of those, that means that others can see your portfolio and they can see the history of how you made trades in your portfolio, and you can see the same thing on other people's on other people's portfolios and their history. It's very nice for learning and for for watching how people do things. And if you see somebody being successful, you can see what they did. All right, portfolio resetting. That means you can go back to the twenty-five thousand that we started with. If you mess up, I'm going to say yes, even though it defaults to no. I'm going to let us, you know. You can you can have forgiveness for a lot of mistakes in this game. That'll be fun. Now, they recommend that you leave the default values for market delay, daily volume, and option daily volume. So we're going to leave those those uh, default values for those volumes. All right, for those first three there. We're going to allow a quick sell at 15 minutes. Default, that's fine. That means if you own something for 15 minutes, you can sell it. That's fine. Minimum price. This is where we're going to say the, uh, you have to be at least a dollar. You can't buy anything that's less than a dollar or consider penny stocks. You can only buy dollars or more stocks. Short stocks, we're going to say you have to have be $5. These are basically the default settings. Uh, stocks for margin, you have to have a $5 stock or more. Blacklisting a security would mean that if we don't want people to buy Google, we could put Google in here. But we're going to let people buy whatever they want to buy as long as it's available on the markets that they can get to. So then we have our commission for a market. This means that if you're going to buy something at the current market price, it's going to cost you this much to buy that stock. So we're going to set that at 9.99 because there's a lot of discount brokers out there now. Now if you're going to be doing a limit, like as I say, you want to buy it at a certain price or sell it at a certain price, it could usually a little bit higher price. So we'll set that a little bit higher, but lower than what their option, their, their initials was. To buy an option, I don't know a whole lot about that, but I'm still going to set those a little lower just because it seems like prices are going down on the brokerage stuff. Diversification, we're going to leave that at 50%. It means that all of your, your whole portfolio could be in one. It could be put into 50% of your portfolio could be put into one stock. So that'd be a big chunk, a big risk of your, your portfolio into one chunk. But we'll allow some flexibility here just for the sake of learning. And then diversification on options, we'll leave it 10%. Uh, margin interest. That means if you borrow against your portfolio to buy more stocks, then you're going to pay interest. We'll put that down to 7% since interest rates are so low right now. Cash interest, 1%. That's as low as we can go. That's probably about what you get in uh, most places. Maybe you might get us up to 2%. But this is the investment game for fun. All right, and so we put our little description in there, and then that's all it takes. We say create game, <clears throat> clear our throats, wait for it to come back. All right, so then we go back to the games tab, <clears throat> and we see that we now have three games instead of just two. Here's the originals and my investment game. Click on that. We go in, we see the normal thing. We have our $25 worth of cash, and we can start trading and start having fun with our new game. So that's all it takes to create a game in Investopedia and start having fun. So if you feel like creating your own game, 
go for it, or you can join the investment game with no end and have fun with us. Thanks. Uh, stop by investment.com and you might find some other things that are interesting to you. Thanks for watching today. Bye-bye.